Sir, can you clarify, the president yesterday said that he would like to shut the government down if he doesn't get funding for the wall, border security. Is what he said yesterday now no longer operative? He's going to support a two-year spending bill without funding for the wall? Uh, look, as I said yesterday, the focus for us has always been to get a uh, two-year budget deal. We've also laid out what the priorities that we want to see in any immigration legislation, uh, and we expect to see that. We do want to, uh, that we've made no secret the president wants funding for the wall, and he wants border security, uh, and we expect to see that reflected in the but budget. He said he wanted to shut the government down if he didn't get it. Now that's no longer operative? Is that uh, no longer the position? Uh, no, the position hasn't changed, and I addressed this yesterday. The, the president is making the point, uh, the only people that have shut the government down are the Democrats. Uh, we haven't shut the government down. We've laid out exactly what uh, we want to happen, and we're working towards achieving those goals. He, he was the one that said he wanted to shut the government down. I'm, I'm not understanding. Uh, look, he said, I want a he, government uh, shutdown. The, the point he's making when you put it in the context is that if we are going to have that fight, it's a fight that the Democrats started last time and they lost, and we think that we would win again. Uh, we want a two-year budget deal. We want an immigration plan that fixes the problem and doesn't further kick the can down the road. Those are the two focuses, and we're hopeful we'll get those done. How can the, the president still have confidence in his deputy attorney general when he said he feels vindicated in the Russia probe by the Nunes memo that mentions Rosenstein and the fact that Rosenstein oversees the Russia probe? Uh, look, as I said yesterday, the president uh, feels vindicated because he feels like uh, the Russia investigation has been politically motivated, witch hunt for the last year, and the memo clearly vindicates the president's position that there was political bias. Has he actually read the Democrats' memo? You said he has seen it, but has he actually read? He, he has, and I told you also that he had met with the deputy attorney general to discuss the differences yesterday. And just really quickly, General Mattis was saying that the president has great affection for the military, but he has yet to visit Iraq and Afghanistan. Wouldn't that be the ultimate way to honor the troops by going there rather than a parade? Look, I think there are a lot of different ways. Um, nothing has been decided or locked in stone. This is in the early discussion phases, and it's something uh, the president is looking at, not just a way that he can, but that the entire country can come together uh, and show support and honor our military. Major. Clarify the status, security clearance of Rob Porter, and if the president has confidence in him as a staff secretary. Um, I, I can give you two statements, as has always been our policy um, when it comes to security clearances. We don't comment on them. I'm not going to change that today. Uh, I can tell you that Rob has been an effective in his role as staff secretary, and the president and chief of staff have had full confidence and trust in his abilities and his performance. Uh, in a more of an update on that front. Rob has put out a statement, um, which I can read to you now, and I think it will address some of those uh, other questions. These outrageous allegations are simply false. I took the photos given to the media nearly 15 years ago, and the reality behind them is nowhere close to what is being described. I've been transparent and truthful about these vile claims, but I will not further engage publicly with a coordinated smear campaign. My commitment to public service speaks for itself. I've always put duty to country first and treated others with respect. I am deeply grateful for the opportunity to have served in the Trump administration and will seek to ensure a smooth transition when I leave the White House. Sarah, is he going to be leaving the White House anytime soon? There was some conversation a couple of months ago that he was at least contemplating. Uh, he is uh, going to be leaving the White House. It won't be immediate, but um, he is uh, resigning from the White House, but is going to stay on to ensure that there's a smooth transition moving Sarah, forward. Sarah, from Sarah, 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 thanks. Less than 18 hours ago, the White House released several statements uh, praising Rob Porter, his service. Obviously, he's somebody who's very close with the president. So why would the president accept his resignation if the president thinks he did nothing wrong? Uh, look, I think that was a personal decision that Rob made uh, and one that he was not pressured to do, but one that he made on his own. Cecilia. Sarah, thanks. Does the president have any concerns about these domestic violence allegations raised against Rob Porter? I haven't spoken to him about specific concerns. You haven't talked to the president about this? About story? whether or not he has specific concerns. I haven't asked him that question, Cecilia. Have you seen the photos of Rob Porter's ex-wife with a black eye? Uh, I don't know. Sarah? Uh, Sarah, in, to follow up on these text messages, the, does the president believe that former President Obama was involved in the investigation, the Russian investigation against him, which is what alleged between those texts between 
Peter Strzok and Lisa Page? Uh, I'm not aware of that specific uh, concern, but I, I think that there is a lot uh, within those text messages that gives us great cause for concern, and we, again, hope that they look at them thoroughly and investigate this process more Sarah. fully. Sarah. 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 Thanks a lot, Sarah. The President weighed in today on Twitter uh, on the stock market the first time this week. He's done so, and he's done so quite a bit over the course of his first year in office. Uh, will we expect the President to continue to weigh in on the daily fluctuations on the stock market going forward? or? Uh, will he sort of let the, the market uh, take its course? Uh, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to speculate on what we may weigh in on every single day moving forward through the administration, but uh, the economy has obviously been a big focus for the administration, and it's something we're going to continue to talk about. Uh, we have a very strong economy. We feel very confident in uh, the direction that we're moving and certainly the focus on the long-term uh, economic fundamentals that this administration has been advocating for. Yeah. On the immigration yeah. deal, would the president be open to the idea of just two pillars of what he's put forward being part of an immigration deal, that being uh, funding for that border wall with Mexico, an increased border security, and then, of course, uh, a legislative fix for those DACA recipients? We've laid out the four pillars that we want to see in immigration legislation. Shannon. Uh, the president today called these text messages from the FBI bombshells. Uh, does he believe there was a conspiracy in the FBI to try and undermine his candidacy, to try and help Hillary Clinton? Can you explain a little bit more his thinking about what he's seen in these text messages? I think it just further shows that there is a uh, reason for all of us to have great con cause for concern in this process, and we hope that it's more for thoroughly and fully looked at as we move forward. Yeah. So just quickly on the FBI, are there some more specific changes, personnel changes, you'd like to see at the FBI? Uh, not that I'm aware of at this time. Stephen? I just want to give you a chance to uh, respond to the concerns about the propriety of this parade down Pennsylvania Avenue. A lot of people in the country think that that's that's not how the American military should be presented to the world, rolling the tanks down America's main street. What do you think? Uh, look, as I said, um, we haven't made a final decision. Uh, the president simply exploring different ways that he can highlight and show uh, the pride that we have in, in the military, the people that have served and sacrificed to allow us all of the freedoms that we have. Uh, the president is very proud of the United States military and all that uh, they do on behalf of all of us, and we're simply exploring options. I, I think it's uh, way too uh, far speculation to start weighing in on, you know, whether or not we think certain things are appropriate when nothing has been decided and it's literally uh, in a brainstorming session. Is it true that the report that the president essentially gave a directive to the Defense Department that this is something that, that, that must happen? But, no, the president asked them to look at different ways and explore and see what those options look like, as the secretary said. John. Sir, could I ask you about the Democratic memo? Um, we understand it. Chief of Staff Kelly illuminated this yesterday that this memo is, is different in terms of its content than the Republican memo was. Uh, General Kelly said it's not as clean as the GOP memo was. Republicans who have read the memo are saying that it, it contains a substantial a number of references to sources and methods. My question to you is, do you believe that the White House is, is I don't want to say being sandbagged, but being put in a difficult <coughs> position by the Democratic minority? forcing you to make redactions or hold back this memo so it can draw a contrast with your treatment of the GOP memo? Uh, I'm not going to make speculations at this point. We're still uh, going through the process uh, that we went through with the Republican memo. We're going to continue to do that. And once that's completed, we'll have something further to add. But as of this point, we don't. Let's see. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is wanting to add immigration to this emerging budget deal on the Hill. Is that something the President would like to see? I think we've made clear that uh, the budget deal should uh, be a budget deal and that members of Congress, like Nancy Pelosi, should not hold our military hostage over uh, a separate issue. We've laid out what we would like to see in immigration legislation, and I think it's something that uh, Nancy Pelosi should support, and hopefully she will come on board. We can get this budget deal done, and then we can focus on getting an immigration deal done. Follow-up, is the President committed to this March 5th 
deadline for DACA, or is he going to extend the deadline? Uh, look, we are hopeful that we will make a deal with Congress, and uh, we'll see what happens after that. But our goal is to try to get something done. We don't want to keep kicking the can down the road, uh, and we'd like to see a solution, which is why we've laid out a plan that we think addresses everybody's concerns and meets those needs. Jordan? Thanks, Sarah. Uh, to put another point on it, will the President sign the budget agreement that was laid out by the Senate this morning? Uh, look, we, uh, we applaud the steps forward that they've made, but we're going to need to see what is in the final bill. But we're certainly happy with the direction that it's moving, particularly that we're moving away from the crisis budgeting that we've been on in the past. Thanks so much, guys.